Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore, and we're continuing our series with Eve Engler, the author of the book, The Ugly Canadian, Stephen Harper's Foreign Policy. And Eve now joins us again from Vancouver. Thanks for joining us, Eve. Thanks for having me. So as I, as I explained in the first segment, we're working our way through different aspects of uh, Prime Minister Harper's foreign policy. And today we're going to talk about Canadian mining. Uh, so Eve, uh, why don't you pick up from there? Canada is, I guess, one of the, if not the leading mining nation in the world globally, uh, and also is uh, extensively involved in some of the most controversial mining. Yeah, Canada is far and away the biggest uh, mining uh, country in the world. Uh, Something like 70% of world mining companies are listed on the Canadian stock exchanges. Uh, from 2002 to 2011, Canadian mining investment abroad went from $30 billion to $210 billion. And it's an important uh, element in the more rightward shift in Canadian foreign policy because so much of Canadian mining uh, investment abroad is dependent upon extreme free market capitalism. And uh, those Canadian investments in, throughout Africa is really intimately tied to the rise of the structural adjustment programs in the 1980s and 1990s and the opening up of natural resource sector uh, in those countries to foreign investment. And, uh, and alongside this, this huge rise in Canadian mining investment abroad has been a innumerable uh, conflicts that Canadian mining companies have had with local communities and uh, where you know they spur uh, violence, uh, security officials from companies in in Guatemala, uh, you know, kill people in local community, or there's incredible ecological decay. Give us some it, specific examples that you explore, that you research. Uh, in in the case of uh, of uh, Gold Core in uh, in Guatemala, uh, they've been in a very aggressive uh, conflict with local community. Um, in the case of uh, Argentina, barracks operations in Argentina, the former environment minister with the Argentinian government um, in a, a standing committee of the House of Commons, she accused Barrick Gold of uh, buying off uh, uh, the officials in, in her department and, and, uh, and threatening people on her staff and threatening, threatening her. And uh, um, in the case of uh, Mexico, uh, uh, a Canadian company uh, involved in, uh, in killing uh, uh, um, people in the community. Um, at, this, at this point, really, you can pick any country in the global south, and there's an example of a Canadian-run mine that has spurred uh, uh, social conflict. Well, to tell, us the specific, tell us the story of uh, the Canada, Canadian mining in the Congo. In the, case of the, in the case of the Congo, there's uh, more than $3 billion in Canadian mining investment in the Congo. Uh, there's innumerable, there's a number of different uh, sort of uh, 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 kind of horror stories uh, uh, there's one example that's particularly controversial from the standpoint of the Canadian government, which is that the, uh, in late 2009, the Congolese government rescinded a mining concession from First Quantum, which is a Vancouver-based company. And, uh, and uh, in response to uh, the, Canadian government, or the Congolese government rescinding this concession, the Harper government uh, uh, um, blocked the Paris Club of Better Nations uh, debt forgiveness uh, to the Congolese government. This is debt forgiveness that was agreed to by all of the other members of the Paris Club of Denver Nations. This was debt that was accrued during the Mobutu dictatorship. Uh, uh, this is odious debt that the majority of Congolese, impoverished Congolese, should not have had to repay. And like I said, it was agreed to by the majority of the, uh, uh, of the Paris Club of Denver Nations. And to put pressure on the Congolese government after they had rescinded First Quantum's concession, uh, the Harper government uh, blocked this this uh, this debt forgiveness. Ultimately, they were only able to stall the debt forgiveness, um, but they did so in the context of First Quantum having found having gotten their uh, their concession in highly dubious uh, circumstances. They had, uh, according to a 2002 UN report, they had uh, they had paid uh, uh, bribes and kickbacks to government officials. Uh, to to win the concession, and this was in the context of the still ongoing uh, civil war or, or multi-country war in, in the Congo, and and despite the the dubious circumstances in which First Quantum had won their concession in in the Congo, the Harper government was willing to block the Paris Club of Denver Nations, and then in fact even get a whole declaration 
in the uh, uh, final final G8 uh, 2010 uh, G8 uh, uh, meeting in Toronto, get a whole declaration criticizing the Congo for its treatment of, uh, of foreign investment foreign investors. So the Harper government has really aggressively lobbied for Canadian mining companies, no matter what the circumstances of those Canadian mining companies are in the, in the local community. Well, the Harper government would probably argue that that's their job to help defend Canadian business interests abroad. And they, I think they would probably argue that these companies, if they're breaking local laws, it's up to local authorities to deal with them. And on the whole, I assume Harper argues they're not breaking local laws. I mean, what's wrong with that argument? I think that m most Canadians don't uh, like the idea that um, that all that the Canadian state is about internationally is defending the interests of corporate corporate Canada, and particularly when these companies are involved in in conflicts with local communities. And, and of course, as as we know, the power dynamics in the local context are are often not um, uh, not what they should be in terms of the ability of foreign investors to to skirt any uh, local local laws is can be pretty pretty wide and as you refer to in the case of the Congo there's an example of a different Canadian company that uh, was involved in a, in a massacre of as many as a hundred people where the Canadian company was actually providing their uh, trucks and different resources to Congolese army officials who went in and killed dozens and dozens of people who were opposed to them to the mining company and, and were in conflict with the with the central government uh, so in those cases of course the Congo Congolese courts are not going to pursue the case particularly aggressively in the courts because there is a heavy level of government complicity. Um, but at the end of the day, there's a number of uh, different Latin American officials uh, who've, uh, who've said uh, uh, privately to different uh, academic researchers that, that basically what they see the Canadian ambassador in their country is as a representative of the mining companies. That's most of what the Canadian mining companies or uh, Canadian embassies are doing in countries like Ecuador and, and Guatemala, um, advancing the interests of Canadian mining companies. And no matter, again, no matter what, um, what the, uh, uh, what level of opposition there is internally. And you have, when Stephen Harper goes on, uh, on diplomatic trips, you know, he, after, when he went to Chile in, in 2007, not long, not long before he was in Chile, uh, there was a, a couple thousand people that had demonstrated against a barrack Barrett Gold planned operation in Chile. Harper made sure, when in Chile, to go to the, the Barrett Gold office uh, in Chile and say, Barrett Gold follows Canadian standards of corporate social responsibility. Similarly, when he was in Tanzania, uh, not long after Barrett had fired hundreds of striking miners at, uh, at their Tanzanian operations, another Barrett run mine in Tanzania, there's been dozens of people uh, killed in, in, in conflict. Uh, and Harper went out of his way to laud Barrett Gold uh, when in Tanzania, and and what that what that's doing is that there's already a certain power dynamic within the within Tanzania or Chile around the mining companies. Obviously, local interests that support the mining operation and some local interests that don't support the mining operation. And the Harper government is clearly intervening in the internal politics to side with the mining company, even though there's often right. very widespread. Uh, a local uh, I mean, popular opposition, which that, I don't think most Canadians would uh, would support. Well, there was there was some talk about a code of contact conduct conduct for Canadian mining companies abroad. Uh, where is that at, and what's been the attitude of the Harper government towards that? Bill C three hundred, which was a private member's bill put forward by a Liberal uh, member of Parliament, was uh, was voted down. Uh, mostly because the cons all the Conservatives uh, uh, MPs voted against it. And basically what Bill C-300 did, uh, or would have done, is uh, it would have ended official public support to mining companies found to be engaged in abuses abroad. So it would end uh, Export, Deve Export Development Canada's uh, financial support to Canadian mining companies would end it. Uh, the support of Canadian embassies to companies found to be involved in, in abuses, and this is a this is a pretty modest, in my opinion, quite a modest uh, uh, bill to bring some controls over Canadian mining companies' operations abroad. It wasn't legislation that would allow uh, local communities to to sue uh, Canadian uh, Canadian uh, mining companies in Canadian courts, and one of the reasons why so many companies. Um, uh, set up mining companies set up in Canada uh, is that the, the legislation is so weak. Uh, one element being that in the case of the U.S., you can hold American companies accountable in American courts for what they do abroad. You can't do that in Canada. 
So there's, a, there's been other efforts to bring legislation, similar legislation to what exists in the U.S. Uh, to Canada. That's also been uh, that's been shot down in, in different uh, in different uh, committee phases. Mm. Okay, we're going to continue our series with Eve Engler on Stephen Harper's foreign policy. So look out for the next chapter, and please join us on the Real News Network. And don't forget, we're in the midst of our fundraising campaign, year-end campaign for a hundred thousand dollar matching grant. Every dollar you give gets doubled. So if you see the donate button here, please click it because if you don't do that, we can't do this.